Follow Name Explain on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, as well as joining my Facebook group, Friends of Name Explain, where you can chat with myself and many other name nerds. Check out the links down below. The estimates for how many words there are in the English language seem to vary greatly. The OED has around 170,000 entries, while Webster's has around 400,000 entries. Not including words that aren't recognized by any dictionaries, boost that estimate up to over 1 million words. Thankfully, we aren't required to know all of them if you speak English. According to studies, the average English speaker has a lexicon of around 40,000 words, which is more than enough. Now, don't get me wrong, I love words and English having them by the bucket load is a glorious thing. English's huge vocabulary can have issues however, like, do we even need all these words? Like think of all the different words we have to say different emotions, like we could use happy, or joyful, or excited, and they all kind of mean the same thing. And then think of all the different names we have for shades of the same colour, like turquoise or duck egg or navy. Can't we just say blue? Some may yearn for a far more simple language, with less cumbersome words. Thankfully, that language exists. And it's called Tokipona. When you first hear that name, it might sound like some kind of pollen Indonesian language found on a remote island whose speakers have been isolated for thousands of years. But the Tokipona language is pretty much the complete opposite of that. It was first created in 2001, just over 20 years ago, by Canadian linguist Sonia Lang. Yep, she really is a linguist called Lang. Nominative determinism at its finest. How many words make up this language is somewhat debated. Some sources say 120 or so, while the dictionary on the language has 137 essential words. Either way, that's not a lot of words. And these words are constructed of just 14 letters of the Latin alphabet, with those being the five vowels of A, E, I, O, and U, and the nine consonants of J, K, L, M, N, P, S, T, and W. All the words in this language were constructed to be easy to pronounce by people who speak a variety of languages, and most words in the language had between two to four letters in them, with the longest word an outlier having seven letters, that being the word kepiken, which means to use or by means of. However, you can ignore the Latin script altogether and instead use the pictogram for each word that Lang created. These are akin to say Japanese kanji or ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics, and these pictogram the graphs are collectively called Cetalampona, meaning simple writing. They're also pretty cute and some are very literal. Like the symbol for the Tokipona word for dead, Molly, looks like a cartoon face with crosses for eyes. Or their word for fish, Kala, looking like, well, a fish. As for the name of the language itself, well that comes from its words meaning the simple language. The words of the language itself weren't created out of thin air either. Multiple languages influenced Tokipona, which according to Wikipedia includes English, Finnish, Georgian, Serbo-Croatian, Chinese, and New Guinea Pidgin, among others. Despite having only around 120 words in its entire language, you may be wondering how on earth anyone is able to say anything in Tokipona. Well, there's two main things in the construction of this language that allows people to talk about a variety of subject matters with such few words. Firstly, words are often chained together to express ideas which cannot be expressed by a single word. A great example of this is with colours. Tokipona only has five words that relate to colours, those being loye, meaning red, Red, yellow for yellow, lasso for blue and green, pimia for black, and wallo for white. As you can see already, blue and green already share a name. But what if you want to talk about something that is purple or pink? Well, instead of them having their only words, you would say something like lo ye lasso for purple, meaning red blue, or yo le wallo for pink, meaning red white. You can get even more abstract too. Like individual fruit have no words in Tokipona. In Instead, we just have the word kili, which means fruit. So if you wanted to talk about, say, a pineapple specifically, you could say maybe suli kili, which means big fruit.
fruit, as pineapples were one of the larger fruits. The language's creator, Sonia Lang, highlighted how abstract this chaining of words can get. There is no tokipono word for car, and she suggested that one could use the two words of tomotawa to refer to cars. These mean indoors and moving forward, respectively, which is fitting for a car as they move and we go inside of them. The second way in which tokipona allows people to talk about a myriad of things with such a brief word count is due to the fact that most tokipona words have multiple meanings. I mentioned the word kili, which means fruit. This word also means vegetable and mushroom too, so you could use it for anything ranging from cantaloupes to cabbages to cordyceps. Another example is with sawili, which means animal or beast or land mammal, so instead of using a specific word like horse or cow or pig, you could just use this single word along with combining of other words as mentioned. Also the pictogram for Swilly is just adorable. Some words are even more abstract with their multiple meanings however. Take the Tokipona word of Nasa. This word's meaning can range from unusual to strange to foolish to drunk. These are all quite different things but there are enough similarities between them all to understand why we can have one word to encapsulate all of these things. Another one is their word of Mama which can mean parent as well as just caretaker. Also yeah, this one really highlights how other languages have influenced the Tokipona. So between chaining words together and having an understanding of all the possible meanings a single word of Tokipona can have, it starts to become a little bit clearer to see how people would be able to speak about a variety of different things with such a small pool of words. Though you may be thinking that speaking Tokipona might lead to every conversation being a bit vague and ambiguous. And you know what? That's kind of the point. Tokiponya is just as much a philosophy as it is a language. Something Sonia Lang was heavily influenced by when she started work on the language was Taoism and wanted it to be as minimalistic as possible. A way for people to talk with as little filler as possible to make things less intense. In Tokiponya, simplicity is seen as very much a good thing. So much so that their word for simple, pona, also means good. Rock Morin's fantastic article on Tokiponya Tokipona for the Atlantic explains the language by saying, the language's minimalist approach is also designed to change how its speakers think. The paucity of terms provokes a kind of created circumlotion that requires careful attention to detail. An avoidance of set phrases keeps the process fluid. The result, according to Lang, is to immerse the speaker in a moment, in a state reminiscent of what Zen Buddhists call mindfulness. Personally, however, Tokipona reminds me of something else entirely. Have you ever seen one of those wristwatches that only have one hand and 24 hours around it? The hand doesn't give you a precise idea as to what time it is, rather an idea as to what time it is. It's around half nine or quarter to 12. The whole philosophy behind these watches is to make people think a bit slow about things and not get too pent up on specifics. Sure, you might not really know what the exact time is, but does that actually matter? To me, this is the school of thought behind Tokipona too. Sure, you might not know what fruit someone is talking about at any given time, but do those specifics actually matter too much in the grand scheme of the world and the conversation you are having? It can make you realize just how much we say that really isn't that important. The aforementioned Atlantic article speaks about how many words we often add to sentences, especially politeness markers by saying, take politeness markers for instance, if it's not too much for an inconvenience, would you please consider possibly bringing me a cup of coffee? In Tokipona, you would just say, give me coffee, either do it or don't do it. There's no word for please or thank you. I mean, if you really wanted, you could say Pona, but then why would you overuse a word that's so big and powerful? Though perhaps the most impressive way in which Tokipona does not get itself too bogged down with specifics is with numbers. Tokipona only really has three words for numbers, one for one, two for two, and mute for several. Though apparently many use the word for hand, luca, to mean five, I guess due to five fingers, and many also use the aforementioned word for several, mute, to mean ten. It sounds pretty startling at first to hear that this language doesn't allow you to say really specific numbers like 824 or 3965. We associate numbers with being incredibly important things, something we wouldn't be able to live without. But Tokipano asked the question, do we really need specific numbers that badly?
Like, if someone had nine oranges, do we really need to say nine, or could we just say several? As someone who has never been a particularly big fan of numbers, regardless of what language they are in, I'm fully on board with ditching them as a concept altogether. Though one number we mentioned earlier was 2001. This was the year that Sonia Lang got to work on her Kong Lang. It would not be until 2014, however, that she published her first book on the subject, with that book being called Tokipona, The Language of Good. Then, in 2021, she finally published the Tokipona Dictionary. Today, the language seems to be doing reasonably well, at least in small pockets of society anyway. While no nation has adopted Tokipona as their native tongue, or anything like that. There are believed to be thousands of speakers of the language who populate online forums, chat groups, and the occasional in-person meetup too. These online groups include a Facebook group, a subreddit, and various discords, whatever the hell they are. There's even a podcast in the language called Kalamasin, which roughly translates into meaning a new sound, and a video sharing platform called Maseka, which is basically a Tokipona version of YouTube, albeit not quite as popular. There's there's even a Tokipona version of Wikipedia, and various books have been translated into the language, including the works of Beatrix Potter. Tokipona has a very passionate following, albeit relatively small when compared to other languages. Though I have to admit, while my career thrives off there being thousands of words for me to dissect and explore, I love the idea of Tokipona, a fun, simple language that doesn't take all that long to understand and get started with talking with other people, a language that strips away all unnecessary words and makes you think about what words you need to use in the moment to easily and simply get your message across. Honestly, it reminds me of one quote in particular, that being what one Kevin Malone from the US office says when everyone is annoyed about his new short form of talking. Why waste time, say lot word when few word do trick? This silly quote from a highly quotable television series perfectly encapsulates the simple goodness of Tokipona. Name Explained depends on viewers like yourself supporting the channel financially on Patreon, so a huge thank you to everyone who does. Donating just $1 a month helps the channel amazingly and gets you bonuses including ad-free videos, exclusive content, the power to request ideas to be made into actual Name Explained videos, and your name at the end of the video with all these awesome people. Visit patreon.com forward slash Name Explained or click the link down below to find out how you too can support the channel. Thank you. Thanks for reaching the end of the video. Why not watch another and subscribe to keep up to date on all things Name Explain? You can find myself on Instagram where I'm Name Explain YT and join the Facebook group Friends of Name Explain to talk with myself and other name nerds. All that will be linked down below. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.